family and Facebook for joining us again on this great Lord's Day. Let us pray. Merciful and kind God our Father we come now at the hour of your preached word. We never take it for granted that we have a right to step in this place but God thank you for using me as a broken vessel once again. We ask you now God for that strength that you always provide. Stand up in me oh God like you've always done. Guard my mind and control my tongue that all that is shared would be what your people need to hear on today. And God, we should never take for granted that we have the right and we will never take uh, praise for your word for only you get the glory, only you get the praise. For this we ask in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. Come with me this morning. Come with me to the book of Joshua, uh, the second chapter, uh, verses 2 through 16. And again, please do me a favor by keep your Bibles open today. Amen. Joshua, second chapter, verses 2 through 16. And we will use the New Living Translation today for our translating Joshua Moses is dead now Joshua takes over God always have somebody ready just take his people forward never think that my mama said the sun rises and sets on you God always have somebody ready to move his people forward. Joshua, the second chapter, verses 2 through 16. And if you could stand, if you can, to hear God's word. If you're not ill, we ask you to always do that, to give his word reverence. Starting again. I'm going to start at verse 4, at 4, start at verse 4. Rahab had hidden the two men, but she replied, yes, the men were here earlier, but I didn't know where they were from. They left the town at dusk as the gates were about to close. I don't know where they went. If you hurry, you can probably catch up with them. Actually, she had taken them up to the roof and hid them beneath bundles of flax she had laid out. Verse 7, so the king men went looking for the spies along the road leading to the shallow crossing of the Jordan River. And as soon as the king men had left, the gate of Jericho was shut. Before the spies went to sleep, uh, that night, Rahab went up on the roof to talk with them. I know the Lord has given you this land, she told them. We are all afraid of you. Everyone in the land is living in terror. For we have heard how the Lord made a dry path for you through the Red Sea when you left Egypt. And we know that uh, what you did to Shion and Og, the two Amorite kings east of the Jordan River, whose people you completely destroyed. No wonder our hearts have melted in fear. No one has the courage now to fight after hearing such things. For the Lord your God is the supreme God of the heavens above and the earth below. Now, she says, swear to me by the Lord that you will be kind to me and my family since I have helped you. Give me some guarantee that uh, uh, 
when Jericho is conquered, you will let me live along with my father and mother, my brothers and sisters, and all of their relatives. I see you, Rahab. We offer our own lives, here's what the spy says, we offer our own lives as a guarantee for your safety. The men agreed, if you don't betray us, we will keep our promise and be kind to you when the Lord gives us the land. Right. Then, since Rahab house was built into the town wall, she let them down by a rope through the window. Escape to the hill country, she told them. Hide there for three days right. from the men searching for you. Then when they have returned, you can go on your way. Right. Verses 13 and 14 is our key verse for the text this morning. When Jericho is conquered, you will let me live along with my father and my mother and my brothers and my sisters and all of their families. We offer our own lives as guarantees for your safety, the men agreed. If you don't betray us, we will keep our promise. Be kind to you when the Lord give us the land. Just for a few minutes, if God will allow, I'd like to preach from this thought. Out of his will, but not his reach. Out of his will, but not his reach. Here in the text we find Joshua, the new leader of the children of Israel, now given instructions to two spies to go confirm what God had already shared with him, that the city of Jericho would be conquered by Israel. Uh -huh. Now Joshua learned from Moses that sometimes it's better to reduce the people you sent for an assignment. For he didn't send 12 like Moses did. Uh -huh. He just sent two. Sometimes it's better to send two than 12. Right. Yeah. Here and now, 40 years later, they're getting ready to move into Canaan again, but the what stands in their way is again the city of Jericho. Wow. Here in this city, the two spies would receive help from an unusual source. They, they would receive assistance from an ungodly woman, someone who today's church would turn their nose up at, and a person that today's church would have no dealing with but isn't that how God works? Yeah. For the one who we think God won't use are the exact people he will employ. Yeah. The one who we think that we should never have any dealing with, it would be the very one that God would put into our lives yeah. to deliver us and to bring us through. Have I got a yeah. That drunk who you think in your family is not worth anything. That person who has spent several years behind bars and you feel they are not worthy to trust in your ministry. That person who you think because they're too, they've had two babies out of wedlock and you feel that they have no place in the youth ministry. But God, somebody said, but God. But God reaches out and gives them a purpose to rescue you. Never think that there is somebody sitting next to you that you are so much better than that God cannot use them. Uh, they might be out of his will right now, but they're not out of his reach. And I'm so glad that, that we have a God who has all that can reach beyond what we can ever imagine. The beauty of this wonderful story is that every outcast, every person who feels unworthy, every person who has felt that no one allows you to overcome your past, now God is saying, I've got an assignment for you. I can use you. Don't ever let anybody say to you that you cannot be used by God that you, there is no goodness in you there is no worth in you 
you, God made you, and as long as you are alive today, I don't know who I'm talking to, yeah, yeah. but somebody needs to hear this. There's something worse in you. Yeah. Uh, because he loves us, he is a merciful God, and he can reach you when nobody else can. Yeah. We know that this uh, prostitute Rahab was special because she had been mentioned three times in addition to this story in the Bible. Uh, again, we know that she is a special woman. If you go into the New Testament and you will see the connection that she has to Boaz and David, you know what she has done in her life. In other words, that where she started out wasn't where she finished. I need to say that again. Where she started out Maybe she was entertaining some men uh, at night, but then she found out that God could change her, that God could make a new uh, opportunity for her to have income. And because of what God has done in her life, she moved uh, from uh, entertaining men to entertaining Jesus. And she became the lineage that our Lord and Savior came to because if you understand Boaz and you understand the lineage of David, there comes our Savior to someone who started out as a prostitute, but in, the, in a glorious state in God. Ah, uh, out of his will, but not out of his reach. Beloved, beloved, I'm so thankful for Rahab and her life story. For her life gives us all hope that Jesus now, here, he loves us no matter how bad our lives have become. And for while we were yet sinners, they said, Jesus died for me and he died for you. I know the Christian community tells us that he can't use us anymore, that we are tarnished goods and that once we messed up, we are messed up for good. But the devil is a liar. God can turn anything around. God can change any situation. That's why we should never give up on hope of anybody that God can move and move them out of where they are to where he wants them to be. Out of his will but not his reach. Jonah, Jonah thought that he could get out of God's reach. He was out of his will because he told him to go to Nineveh. He said, no, I ain't going to Nineveh. I'm going somewhere else. And he got on the boat, but he forgot to know uh, that God can reach you. For he says, if I make my bed in hell, he says, you can go out and get me. Yes. And he reached near uh, uh, Jonah when Jonah thought that he could hide and run from God. He, he, he reached Moses when Moses said, Lord, I can't do this thing that you want me to do. I, don't, I can't talk to the people. Uh, uh, but God says, I will prepare someone to speak for you, Moses. But you just be ready to go. He reached Ruth. He reached Ruth when Ruth left uh, a place where, uh, uh, well, when, Mo uh, when uh, Naomi left a place that was a promise, uh, there was a famine in the land, but it didn't mean it was always going to be a famine. So she went over to Moab, and, and she went away from God's people to ungodly people. But God sent an ungodly woman who didn't know that God, Ruth, and he reached Naomi, and Ruth said, my old God will be my God. And she said, I'm going to go where you go. And I, no, Naomi, you're going back to promise. So you've heard that the famine was over. And I'm going to go and just like Rahab and trust your God. Yeah. Is there anybody this morning ready to trust God? Yeah. Are you ready now, really, to trust who he is? Yeah. Come on, beloved. Come on, let's give him some praise. Come on, let's give her some glory this morning. Uh, here now, you, you may still have some issues, but God can and will use you. Here it is. If you make yourself available, 
still drinking, but he can use you. Still lying now, but then he can still use you. Still cursing, not every word, but he can still use you. Uh -huh. Still sleeping around, but he can move you out of that bed back to your right bed. God can use you. But you've got to make yourself available. Don't let somebody here today tell you you got to get all cleaned up before God can do something with you. That's a lie from hell. God has used all through the Bible to mess up folk and want to write any kind of way. And God used them to do his great work of ministry. Just on the heels of Paul, Saul killing Stephen, so he knocks him off his beast and then blinds him and shows him a better way. And now Saul becomes Paul and becomes one of the greatest writers in the New Testament. All because he was out of God's will, but not out of his reach. I want somebody to know today that God can reach you. God can reach you. I know you feel down. I know you feel depressed. I know you feel dejected. I know you feel that I ain't got nothing else to offer. But hold on, God can reach you. He can reach you. And so, beloved, uh, I don't know about you, but I, I get excited when I hear this kind of a passage, son. For it lets me know that my past life, yeah. while it may not have been peaches and cream yeah, yeah. of how I live, God can change it yeah. to what it needs to be. Yeah. And so uh, as I look at this text this morning, I want to share four things with you that while Rahab was out of his will because she was not living according to God's way, but she was not out of his reach. And because she did some things to put her back in the will of God, and he reached her, not only her, he reached her entire family. Don't you know somebody's life is dependent on you? Don't ever think that you are all just responsible just for you. There's somebody tomorrow morning will do better because of what they saw you do today. Of what you told them today or how you lived before them today. Don't you ever think that when you do dirt that you ain't hurt nobody. But you always take somebody down with you. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you don't think you got any family. There's somebody still watching you that when you go down, they go down. So, beloved, I'm at my first point. I got four this morning. Here, here, here's, here's some things that we need to take from Rahab that will help us when we feel that we are out of God's will. But watch him reach us if we would do these things. The first point that I see in the text is point one. Uh, her hearing went deeper than her head. Her hearing went deeper than her head. Right. Let me help you understand. Too often, we hear the word of God right. over and over and over and over again, yeah. but we never uh, uh, let it go deeper than our head. Right. And you say, Pastor Benjamin, what's wrong with that? Because God doesn't want the word to go in your head. Right. He wanted to go into your heart. Uh -huh. uh, look at the text. Look at the text. Uh, I, I'm in verse 11, 10 and 11. She says, for here we go. She said, for we have what? Heard. That's a hearing process. How the Lord made a dry path for you through the Red Sea when you left Egypt. And we know what you did to Shion and of the two Amorite kings east of the Jordan River, whose people you completely destroyed. Verse 11, no wonder our hearts 
have melted uh, in fear. So now it, 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 it moves from what she heard right. to it begin to change her heart. And see, that's what God will do. She said, no wonder, no one has the courage to fight after hearing such things. Uh, see, beloved, God, God uh, uh, is not excited about what you hear. But what he gets excited about is what transforms you. What you allow goes into your heart and manifests itself to be like his son. Too many of us are hearing, and that's all we do. God says that what you hear must become greater than what goes into your head. For it's not what defiles a man, what goes into him, but what comes out of him. And so what we want to come out of us is the word of God, living like God wants us to live. Things. It's not about what you get in your head only, but what you let manifest yeah. in your heart. Yeah. What's going on in your heart? Yeah. See, you can't tell me right. a whole lot about who you are and say that uh, I think you read me wrong yeah. when I'm just watching what you do. You must, you must not know me. I don't have to know you. I just watch what you do. Because see, you won't do what's not in your heart. Oh, I ain't like that. Well, you keep doing it. So that must be in your heart. You can't lie against the heart. You can lie to me about what's in your mind, but your action shows me what was in your heart. Proverbs, come on, let me help you. Proverbs 4, 23 and 24. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Put away all crooked thinking and dispose of all evil speech. When you have cursing on your lips, it's not in your head, it is in your heart. When you keep cheating on me and doing me wrong, it's not in your head, it is in your heart. Ah, Ezekiel 36 and 26 says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone, see, and give you a heart of flesh. In other words, when you keep treating people bad, your heart is stony, but God says, I need to put a transplant in you to put one in you that when you see somebody you'll have love compassion and forgiveness but that's what we stand on here at Build of Earth love, compassion and forgiveness her hearing went deeper than her head the second thing that I see here that out of his will but not of his reach that Rahab showed me here and this one we really need to get. Point two says she believed the outcome before the conquest. She believed what's going to happen before it even happened. Speak of things that are not as though they were. Now see, we've got to get some believers to learn how to speak some things that can exist to, to speak what you believe is already going to come to pass. Then you wouldn't be so downtrodden. You won't be so disappointed, so sour about who you are in Christ. But, but see, you, you've got to be able to believe the outcome before the conquerors. Uh, yeah. For we know that Rahab's heart was changed because of this belief. She believed the outcome. Now I'm going to show you where it is. Yeah. Verse 9 through 11. All right. Let's go Bible. Let's go Bible. Right. Verses 9 through 11. She said what? Verse 9. I know the Lord has given you the land. Yeah. Yeah. I know. We haven't fought yet, Rahab. Right. Yeah, yeah, but I, I know it. I'm just a, a, 
a Joshua here with, with a little army of, of, of Israelites, not a little but a big army, but we, we haven't fought to you. Your walls are fortified. This is a tough city uh, of Jericho. But she says, I don't care how tough our walls is. Uh, I'm speaking things that are not as though they were. I've already known that he's given you this land. She told them, we are all afraid of you. Everyone in the land living here is terrified. Go on verse 10. For we have heard how the Lord made a bride. He goes on to talk about the past, what the Lord has done. And she goes on talking about the king. And then verse 11. No wonder our hearts have melted in fear. No one has the courage to fight after hearing such things. For the Lord your God, there it is, is the supreme God of the heavens above and the earth below. She's saying that we don't have a chance. She's speaking what hasn't happened yet, but knowing that it's going to come to pass. I, I wish somebody this morning I would start speaking. Yes, tell them you can speak in tongues and they can understand you. I wish you would speak some things right now that are not as though they were. And watch God, watch God, watch God, watch God, watch God. God. Begin to make some changes. If you open up your mouth and tell God, I just know you're going to do it. Watch him do it. I can't thank my mother enough for when we came into the house sometimes that Daddy was away working on construction. He said, Mama, I don't know if it's going to be all right. Mama said, yes, it is. God done showed me it's going to be all right. Mama, how do you know it don't look like we got the resources? And you just trust and believe. Go on back to bed. Or go on back to doing what you're doing. God got it under control. We've got to start to speak victory. Yes. We've got to start speaking over our children. We've got to start speaking over our grandchildren. I know you came from a broken home, but that don't mean you're going to stay broken. I, I know you come uh, from an alcoholic father, but that don't mean you're going to carry that trait. I know uh, you went to that job and they said you are not what we're looking for, but you just go to the next interview. God has made it already available that when you put your application on the door, you're going to get the job. Never forget this story. My mother was working in this family, this white folks' kitchen all the time that I was young. Just before I went to college, mama said, I I need to make more money. Dad is disabled. I gotta find a better job. And Miss uh, Blanche came to my mother. She says, I got another job. And I'm leaving the, the start of school where I am the lunchroom manager. And the job is yours. My mother said, the job is mine. She said, yes. Just tell him I sent you. All right, now. Uh -huh. All right. Well, uh, uh, my mother went on down there, but first she asked the lady, can you give me another raise? She said, you know, I ain't got no money. I ain't going to give you nothing. My mother just wanted to ask one more time. Sometimes you got to ask people one more time. Are you going to do right by me? No, you ain't going to do all right. That's all I want to know. I don't want God said, I didn't go back and ask one more time. And so she went to uh, the uh, school and the principal was there and she walked in. And she said, Branch sent me. All right. uh -huh. She was believing what Branch said that what was not would be. Yeah. And the principal says, you're hired. Right, she All said, right. you don't know who I am. She said, well, now tell me your name. Uh, you see, look at what God will do. Uh, uh, most interviews, they got to know who you are. Uh, yeah. And know what's going on with you, what you're about. Uh, but she believed what was not that would be because Black said, just say my name, say my name. If somebody today would just say the name of Jesus, if you just say his name, just before you walk into that bad situation, just say, Jesus, I'm counting on you. Every time I get on the plane, I up and I go down, I 
I said, Jesus, thank you. If you just learn to call on this man. Somebody told me there's power in his name. Somebody told me there's healing in his name. Somebody told me there's deliverance in his name. Say my name. Say my name. I wish we would learn how if we don't learn anything else to say his name. Jesus. 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 I'm out of his will, but not his reach. But let me go on to point three. I got two more to go. Point one says her hearing was deeper than her head. Point two says she believed the outcome before the conquest. Point three, out of his will, but not his reach, says this. Her faith, acknowledge, and acceptance, don't miss that, God majestic sovereignty. Her faith, acknowledge, is one thing to do, but it doesn't do good to acknowledge who he is. Satan knows who he is, but she accepted God, majestic sovereignty. I'm in verse 11, verse 11. For the Lord your God is what? The supreme God of heaven and earth. Let's talk about that supreme, uh, majestic and sovereignty. Majestic and sovereignty is a phrase that combines two ideas to describe God's authority. Majestic refers to God greatness, splendor, and uh, uh, emphasizes the majestic and the glory surrounding God's power. Yes, right. For Isaiah 6 and 1 says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw, what did you see? The Lord uh, sitting on the throne high and lifted up and the train, the glory, and his robe filled the temple. That's the majestic, that was the splendor of my God. That no matter where I go, he's there. No matter where I travel, he's with me. That's the majesticness of God. But I'm so glad that he's sovereign. Sovereignty, the significance of that it signifies God's supreme authority and dominion. For he is the ultimate ruler, king of kings, and lords of lords. For Isaiah 40 and 28 says, Have you not known? Have you not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, Neither faith is nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. No matter how many books you get, no matter how many commentaries we look at, we cannot begin to understand the awesomeness of the sovereignty of our Lord. For when there was nothing, he was there. And he spoke into nothing and made something. That's why we got to trust and believe in the sovereignty of who he is. Oh, I know man passed on some judgment, but you ain't God. You're not God. Yes, it looks like I'm that, and I'm probably at that, but you still ain't God. Rahab is a good example of that. Yes, I'm a whole mother, but don't mean that there's no greatness can come out of me. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean that it's not available in me. Some child needs to know just because they call you, you look just like your daddy, and they say because they say that, your daddy wasn't nothing, don't mean that you ain't going to be something. Don't you ever take that into your system. Don't you ever let anybody tell you who you are. 
God has the final say. Yeah. And so as I close, out of his will, but not his reach, I told you hearing, her hearing went deeper than her head. She believed the outcome before the conquest and her faith acknowledged and accepted God's majestic sovereignty. Oh, yeah. Well, the last thing, Deacon Harrison, that what she did when she was out of his will, but uh, put it back, put her back in the will of God. Put it back so that God could reach her. I want you to know that you can do things uh, uh, that make God stop and turn around and say, let me go back. Uh, for Hezekiah uh, screamed out uh, in his anguish and his despair, Lord, remember me, for I have been faithful over my life. I've done some good things. I've kept your commandments. And the Lord told Isaiah, go back to my servant and tell him I've heard his cry and I've seen yeah. his tears. Yeah. Well, point four yeah. that I love what Roy Ham did. Yeah. And I wish more of us would do this. Point four, yeah, yeah. she understood what it meant to be community inclusive. Yeah. Oh, okay. She understood what it meant to be community inclusive. Where are you at, Pastor? I'm at Pastor. Two. I'm at verse 12. Right. Now swear to me by the Lord that you will be kind to me, but I'm not just worried about me, my family. I ain't just looking at my family only. But I want you also to look at my father, my mother, my brothers, and my sisters. But I ain't stopping there. I want you to look at their family also. I don't care who they married to, but Lord, I want you to bless them too. You see, uh, too many of us uh, have uh, uh, too much vertical prayers instead of uh, Horizontal prayer. Yeah. Yeah. What am I saying? We're always praying, oh Lord, oh bless me, Lord, increase my territory, help me, God, to be all I can be. And God said, Well, how have you help your neighbor? Have you helped the person you pass every day? Walk into their job, you know they got to walk hours just like you uh, going to the same job, but you pass them. You see the hungry. Have you made some provision to bless somebody? God says, let me see some horizontal prayer. Blessing somebody. Blessing somebody. Before you keep on always offering yourself up to me and tell me to do for you. She says, uh, there's no way that I'm going to come to you, God, yes. and think selfishly of just yes. me. But I'm praying right. that you reach my family yes. and my family, family's family. Yes. See, that's what we've got to get back to. There used to be a time yes. that we would pray yes. for not just our own. But our family's family's family. Yeah. In other words, I, my brother, my sister may not even be speaking to me, but I'm going to pray for them and their children. Yeah. I'm going to ask the Lord to reach farther than just me. I'm going to pray for my neighbor. Now, who is my neighbor? Is everybody you come in contact with? Yeah. See, we've got to stop these be mine, I prayers. But Lord, help us. Lord, bless us. Lord, deliver us. Lord, created us. Is there anybody this morning want to give some of us? Give God some of us praise. Oh, God, bless us. Thank you, God, for us. Thank you, God, for 
for delivering us. Thank you, God, for making a way for us. Thank you, God, for feeding us. But she recognized that if I'm going to get back into his wheel, I've got to have some us in my voice. And if you read on in the text, ah, if I had a fifth point, it would be this. Just because you got a promise, make sure you keep being obedient. If you read the text, what she saved or freed the, 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 the spies by, got her saved by. What she freed the spies by, got her saved by. It's in the text. She let them down by a scarlet red rope. But just before the last spy left, he says, if you want to be saved, if you want us not to destroy this whole city, Deacon Harrison, and everybody in it, he says, you leave this rope, this red rope that you freed us by, that when we come back, we will see it still in place. And if you make sure your family stays within the rope, because if you stay in the rope, God can cover you. He says, if you stay in the house, in other words, if you stay in my word, I can cover you. But when you go outside of my word, you're getting outside of my safety. And when they came back, the spies saw the rope. And everybody who stayed inside the rope made it to Canaan. I'm just telling somebody today, if you want to be reached by God and get back into his wheel, stay inside the rope. Stay inside his word. Stay inside what he told you to do. For obedience brings blessing. Obedience brings deliverance. Obedience break power. I'm so glad that I have a God. Even if I'm out of his will, I'm not out of his reach. And you ought to thank him for having the sovereignty to find you wherever you are. The door of the church is open. You may come.